from the studios of Channel 12, I Believe in Miracles, with a message of hope and music of inspiration, with your host, Pastor John Michael. Well, I'm going to take a moment at the beginning of this telecast to wish a happy anniversary to my wife, Marilyn. It was on August the uh, 11th in uh, 19... 56, that's 57 years ago, that we said I do to each other. And uh, I sent a text message to my four grandchildren. And I said, FYI, that's for your information, I love your grandmother. And uh, so I just wanted to put that on the record here on the I Believe in Miracles telecast for today. In any way, I, I want to begin the program with a story that was written by Robert Morgan in a book, Then Sings My Soul. And this is what he said. She was an embittered woman, Charlotte Elliott of Brighton, England. Her health was broken. And her disability had hardened her. If God loved me, she muttered, he would not treat me this way. Hoping to help her, a Swiss minister, Dr. Caesar Mallon, visited the Elliots on May the 9th of 1822. Over dinner, Charlotte lost her temper and railed against God and the family. In a violent outburst, her embarrassed family left the room, and Dr. Milan was left alone with her. You are tired of yourself, aren't you? He asked. You are holding to your hate and, and anger because you have nothing else in the world to cling to. Consequently, you have become sour and bitter and resentful. Well, she replied to him, what's your cure? And he said, the faith you are trying to despise. As they talked, Charlotte softened. Her heart softened. If I wanted to become a Christian and to share the peace and joy you possess, what would I do? Well, he said, you should give yourself to God just as you are now, with your fightings and fears, hates and loves, pride and shame. I would come to God just as I am. Is that right? Well, she did that and was moved to write a song based upon John 6:37, which says the words of Jesus, he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. And so she later penned the words of the well-known song, Just As I Am. Now we're gonna marry that song with a Fanny Crosby song entitled, Pass Me Not, and I hope you like this wedding. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Say
but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee. as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I am though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe. Oh, God does honor brokenness and humility, repentance and faith. It was Paul in, in the book of uh, Acts who suddenly was encountered by a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will you have me to do? What will you have me to do? And just as Saul was, he broke his heart and his pride and his um, hardness. He was melted. He was warmly melted. And he fell into the hands of Jesus, who became his Lord and Savior. He called him my Lord Jesus Christ. It reminds me of some scriptures in the Old Testament from Psalms in chapter number 51 where it says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. And again, this one comes from Isaiah in chapter number 57, verse 15, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. We're going to have another marriage right now and that's a marriage of two songs. The one is called 
Only trust him. And the words go like this. Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. And then it goes into the song, Since Jesus came to my heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Marilyn will do the wedding. Well, the evangel is this good message. It's a message of freedom and victory, and it's a message that can only be described as good. The little Greek word you simply means uh, epsilon, upsilon, which is, simply means good. A eulogy is a good word. And uh, a, a, this is a good message a good message of what Christ has done for us to bring joy and peace, whether before there is conflict and chaos and bitterness and hatred and, and um, a lust and, and all kinds of bitter things and hurtful things. Yeah, the word guilt and shame and remorse and regret and repentance are all very real and genuine words. These are words that we must face and, and uh, maybe discuss a little bit today. I have brought along with me Roger's the Theosaurus, and um, I, I just wanted to give you some of the tremendous um, uh, synonyms that there are. For instance, it's uh, number 847, which talks about uh, oh, the word uh, dishonor, and then put the emphasis on the dishonor. This is the opposite of honor. Disgrace, the opposite of grace. Shame burning, humiliation, scandal, vileness, turpitude, stigma. That's a mark, a brand, a reproach, imputation, slur, stain, blot, spot. Uh, other words are um, tarnish, taint, defilement. And going on, it talks about, uh, uh, you know, the being, f falling into the shade falling from one's high estate. Um, and and this, is, this is guilt. And of course the word shame is kind of like a twin or a, a partner to that word guilt. Uh, this is number uh, 947. It's uh, misconduct and misbehavior. 
uh, misdoing, um, misdeed, fault, error, transgression. This is guilt. Uh, this is a uh, picadillo, a flaw, a blot, a mission, a failing. And so you get the idea that, um, that this is a harsh reality. Now we see it every day. We see it in, every day in the newspaper. We see it in the, in the um, in just common life and the way people live and the way people are. And it is not always good. It is not always good. There is badness in this world. So should we just ignore it or should we deal with it? Well, I, I think, um, it's, I just want to just ramble around here. You know, I'm not, when, what do I think of when I speak to you? Well, today, when I speak to you, because I don't know who you are, um, I'm thinking that I'm going to just speak to you as you being me. So I want to talk to myself. I want to say, you know, this, this is, I'm trying to reason with myself. What is guilt? What does it mean to be guilty? What does it mean to have that um, feeling in your heart? Is it a painful thing? Is it a, can you imagine standing before a judge and having him say, guilty, and then pronounce a sentence? There is such a thing as a false guilt. So let's begin there. For not all guilt uh, can be, um, you know, there, I, I have, I've lived long enough, I've met enough people in vocation I've been in my life long, I have encountered enough uh, angry people in my life to, um, to be able to know that there are people who try to make us feel guilty. Whether we choose to, to um, listen to their uh, statements and embrace them in, the, in, in, in receiving guilt is a choice we have to make. Um, there, there are ways in which people are manipulated. They try to manipulate. They try to stay on top. They try to control. They uh, want to make you uh, feel that you owe them something, that uh, you're indebted to them. Um, yeah, this, this is a reality. And false guilt is something that um, can be swiftly and easily, should be easily dismissed. It, it's not worth discussing. But then there is true guilt. What is true guilt? Well, I have a, a lady. This lady was a survivor of the Holocaust. Uh, she, um, uh, she, with her family, escaped the Warsaw Ghetto, and that saved her life. She was a Polish lady, but she was Jewish. And uh, her name was Alice Miller. That was her married name. Um, and uh, she became a, a well-known author and uh, active in the field of psychiat psychiatry. Well, she claims that many people, and I'm quoting now, many people suffer all their lives from this oppressive feeling of guilt, the sense of not having lived up to their parents' expectations. No argument can overcome these guilt feelings, for they have their beginnings in life's earliest period, and from that they derive their intensity. End of quote. This particular article, which is on the subject of guilt, uh, this may uh, be linked with what Les uh, Perot has called the disease of false guilt. At the root of false guilt is the idea that you feel, that what you feel must be true. And if you feel guilty, you must be guilty. So we want to dismiss this. It is not the feeling of guilt. It is not the false guilt. It is not the, um, uh, this sh shadowy um, figure that haunts or follows us. Uh, we should dismiss it. However, there is that true guilt. If you notice in the song that um, Charlotte Elliott wrote, she, um, in the first, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. 
and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, uh, just as I am, and I lost it, just as I am, uh, to rid my soul, this is the line I want, to rid my soul of one dark blot. That's like this general burden that the human race does face and does bear by nature of our birth into this human race, the fall in the beginning, one dark blot. And then it goes on to say, and can cleanse each spot. That's the specific sin or wrongdoing in life. Well, I want to speak to you today about going from guilty to guilt-free. Going from guilty, and that's true guilt, to guilt-free. Not everybody who is charged is guilty. We are all charged by God with the blot and that we must face. But there are other things that we do against each other as well as against God that are specific offenses that are, because God gave us the law, are like a schoolmaster to drive us to our knees, to humility, to brokenness, to the just as I am, and all the repressed things. Now let me talk to you about guilt. Again, guilt can be denied. Guilt can be repressed. To try to say it doesn't exist. I will not believe it. You know, don't believe the false guilt, but the true guilt, yeah. This is something we should take seriously to heart and embrace and admit. Then there's something else. Not only is there, is there some that deny the guilt and repress it, but who transfer the guilt and blame it on somebody else or something else. That's called projection. Blaming others. Adam blamed the woman. The woman blamed the serpent. And so passing the buck from one to another, we can always find, if we choose to, to blame somebody else rather than accept and say, I was wrong, I am sorry, I have sinned. Those are healthy words to say, and those are freeing words to say. But let's go a little farther. Guilt can also be dealt with by putting harm on ourselves. It's called giving punishment to ourselves. And sometimes I wonder if those people who don't do things to numb their brain, to try to um, harm their lives, who live extremely risky and, and dangerous lives, if there's maybe not some of this at oper operating in them. It's something to think about. I got my Bible open to Romans in chapter number three. Verse number nine says, what then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have proved both Jews and Gentiles. Both Jews and Gentiles. That we are all under sin or we're all guilty. He goes on to explain that in the next paragraph and then comes to this conclusion. This is verse number 19. Now we know that what things soever the law says, it says to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, that, no f that uh, every mouth may be stopped and that all the world may become guilty before God. So, I am guilty. Guilty, your honor. And as a seven-year-old boy, I sensed my guilt in an enormous way. And I said, I'm guilty before God. I acknowledged it. And I found a freedom from that blot of sin. And since that time, I have been saying guilty, 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 
over and over. It's a pattern for my life. Because I offend someone, I, unintentionally or intentionally, I don't intentionally. My heart is, is wishing, you know, there's a wonderful change in my life that has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart, into my life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. These are wonderful words from the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Think about this. This is the message of reconciliation. Reconciliation of a human being with God and feeling free and at peace with God. I want you to have that. Whether you're in jail or in the hospital, whether you're embittered, whether you're angry, whether you're like Charlotte Elliott, oh, I want you to say, what, what can I do? And just as you are, open your heart, open your heart. Maybe you might even fall to your knees. But will you just submit it all? Give it all to him. And let him embrace you with his eternal love. It's time to pray. Oh God, open your arms. Receive some, some repentant man or woman, boy or girl today. That they may, that they, that they may shed their tears. And that you may put them in your bottle and treasure that, this moment forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, the fact of sin is stated in the Bible. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. God commends or proved his love to us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 12. 5, 8, and then from Romans chapter 10, wonderful, wonderful words. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God bless you. We hope to see you again next week. Until then, goodbye. You've been listening to program number 2269. If you have any comments or inquiries regarding this telecast, please address them to Miracles, P.O. Box 128, Mankato, Minnesota, 56002, and refer to program number 2269. I Believe in Miracles is a ministry of Grace Baptist Church in Mankato.